Hello! In this video we will discuss random sampling and random assignment. Random sampling occurs when subjects are being selected for a study. If subjects are selected randomly from the population, then each subject in the population is equally likely to be selected and the resulting sample is likely representative of the population. Therefore, the study's results are generalizable to the population at large. Random assignment, on the other hand, occurs only in experimental settings where subjects are being assigned to various treatments. If subjects are assigned randomly to treatments, then any observed effect can be attributed to the treatment, and hence we can make causal conclusions based on the study. Let's give a quick example. Suppose you want to conduct a study evaluating whether people read serif fonts or sans serif, or in other words, without serif fonts, faster. Note that serifs are the small decorative pieces on the ends of each character, as shown in the figure here. Ideally, you first randomly subjects for your study. Then, once you have collected a sample of subjects, you randomly assign half of them to read some text in serif font, and the other half to read the same text in sans serif font. Note that you do not ask people to choose what treatment they are going to be exposed to, you as the researcher assign them to the, to the treatments. So sampling happens first, and assignment happens second. Random sampling allows us to obtain a sample representative of the population, which then allows us to generalize our conclusions to the population at large. Random assignment allows us to make sure that the only difference between the various treatment groups is what we're studying. For example, in the serif sans serif example, random assignment helps us create treatment groups that are similar to each other, and the only difference between them is that one group reads text in serif font and the other in sans serif. Therefore, causality can be inferred. So, in summary, a study that employs random sampling and random assignment can be used to make causal conclusions, and these conclusions can be generalized to the whole population. This would be an ideal experiment, but such studies are usually difficult to carry out, especially if the experimental units are humans, since it may be difficult to randomly sample people from the population and then impose treatments on them. Most human experiments actually rely on volunteers. Such a study that employs random assignment but not random sampling can be used to make causal conclusions, but these conclusions only apply to the sample and the results cannot be generalized. A study that uses no random assignment but does use random sampling is your typical observational study. Results can only be used to make correlation statements, but they can be generalized to the whole population. A final type of study, one that doesn't use random assignment or random sampling, can only be used to make correlational statements, and these conclusions are not generalizable. This is an unideal observational study. I hope that this video has been helpful for distinguishing random sampling and random assignment and understanding the consequences of using or not using these techniques when designing a study. Thank you for watching.